Welcome back to the Gentleman's Gazette. In today's video, we're gonna go over the 10 things that you never want to wear on a date. Now, dating is stressful for everyone. On top of making plans of where you're gonna go to eat or what you're gonna do, you have to pick out what you're going to wear. Now, we've already created the video on how to plan for a date, which includes planning a week out because, well, you know, we're quite thorough. But today, we're focusing on what not to do, or rather, what not to wear. So, if you avoid the pitfalls on this list, you'll have less to worry about when it comes to picking out your outfit, and you can focus more on having a great time. Please note that this list was made with classic style in mind, so if that fits you, you might find some of these to your advantage. And that being said, even if you're not into classic style, we really think that everyone can benefit from this list. Number one on our list is dirty, damaged, or smelly clothes. Now, it should go without being said that your clothes should be freshly laundered. After all, if you have to do the smell test before you put something on, it's probably best to put it in your hamper instead. And also, you have no excuse to have bad smelling laundry because we have an entire playlist on how to take care of your garments. And remember, everyday wear can affect the way your garments smell, so if you can, it's best to change out of your work clothes. After all, a fresh set of clothes might help you be in a fresh state of mind as you go out on your date. And in addition to your clothes smelling great, they should also look great. After all, if your lucky shirt looks ragged, it won't help you get lucky. Now, understanding what's acceptable wear and tear will help you get a better understanding about what's appropriate and what's not appropriate to wear on a date in this area. Make sure to pay attention to items you might not normally think of, like a tattered belt, stained sneakers, or scuffed dress shoes. The second on our list is ill-fitting clothing. While your clothes might smell nice and look nice, it's important that they fit well. Now, we've said it before and I'll say it again, fit is everything. No matter what you're wearing, make sure it fits well. After all, having good fit unlocks your clothing's true potential. Make sure your clothes are properly sized, they're well tailored, and don't wear things that are too small and uncomfortable. Trust us, your date will not be impressed with you trying to squeeze into that extra slim fit shirt. And after all, squeezing into a shirt that's too small will make you look like a stuffed sausage. In general, overly tight shirts and jeans are meant to artificially show off your muscles, and this is not a style that we recommend. Comfortable, well-fitting clothing will make you feel better on the date and help you to better enjoy your date's company. Number three is wearing way too much cologne. Now, many men are very concerned about the way they smell when they go on a date, but you shouldn't go take a bath in Creed before you go out. And in reality, wearing too much cologne will have your date wondering what smells you're actually masking rather than showing off your love of Creed Aventus. Also, you might not know that your date has a sensitivity to odors, and this could give them a headache the entire time. The solution to bad smells is good hygiene, so make sure to bathe and brush your teeth before you go out. And if you want to add in your favorite cologne, that's fine. Just apply a reasonable amount. Usually this is two to three spritzes on the wrist or on your neck. And if you've never tried cologne and you want to, we have a whole guide on that. Number four are clothes that are either too casual or too formal. Now, we live in an ever increasingly casual world, but if there's one time to put your best foot forward, it's on a date. Wearing clothes that are too casual might imply that you're not taking the date seriously and you're taking your date's time for granted. Also, if you dress too casually, you might make your date feel overdressed and that might not make them feel very confident. Obviously, what constitutes as too casual really depends on your style, your date style, and what you're going to be doing. After all, I don't expect you to wear white tie to the ice cream parlor. However, there are some items we think are just too casual for most dates. And this is especially true if you're someone who feels like they adhere to classic style. Flip-flops or slide sandals, cargo shorts, or really any garment with cargo pockets, undershirts worn as regular shirts, and t-shirts with ironic slogans or phrases are really not going to contribute to a romantic atmosphere. Also, your date probably won't find your I'm with stupid t-shirt very funny. But on the other side of the spectrum, you don't want to overdress. Overdressing might make your date feel self-conscious as well, and it might make them think that you are trying to show off. Keep in mind that if you suggest the venue to let your date know about the dress code. And if your date picks the venue, make sure to ask them what the expected attire is. Now, it might end up that both of you are the only ones actually following the dress code, but hey, you'll both look fantastic. Number five, athletic wear or athleisure. Building off our previous topic of clothing that's too casual, most of the time, athletic wear and athleisure is just too casual for any sort of date. Also, unless you're planning on taking your date to a sporting event, it's best to leave your team jerseys at home. 
There's also a reason why most nice restaurants now explicitly forbid sweatpants, tank tops, other gym clothes, and baseball caps. And Preston will tell you to always take your hat off indoors. <laughs> take your hat off. Obviously, there are exceptions to this rule. If you're gonna go on a hike or on a bike ride, athleisure and athletic wear is perfectly fine. I mean, after all, the only person I know who rides a Peloton wearing a suit is Raphael. Number six, wearing the wrong shoes. So you've picked out your jacket, your shirt, your pants, all the accessories. Don't ruin your outfit by picking the wrong pair of shoes. Your shoes might not be at eye level, but they have massive importance in your outfit. And on a big date, every detail counts. When crafting an ensemble, your shoes should never be an afterthought. Fortunately, you're in luck. We have many guides on how to combine shoes with the rest of your outfit. But in summary, please pay particular attention to appropriateness, harmony, and formality. To keep it short, don't try to sneak into a black tie restaurant wearing spectators. And if you're wearing mostly lighter elements and colors, don't wear chunky black shoes. Lastly, if you're wearing a suit, don't clash its formality by pairing it with sneakers. I mean, unless you're planning on running a marathon after dessert. Just always remember that the right shoes with the right outfit will make for a great date. Number seven, overly branded clothing. Now, here at the Gentleman's Gazette, we are not big fans of overly branded clothing, and dates are no exception. Excessive in-your-face branding can be really off-putting, and your date will think that you're only there to dazzle them with your drip. This can make your date feel self-conscious or inadequate, or just think that you're a brand snob, or that you're compensating for something. After all, using brands to signify wealth and status usually backfires. And even if over-the-top branding doesn't give your date the wrong idea, it can just be distracting. After all, your Louis fit will take attention away from you if you're looking like this sitting across the table. Number eight is excessive jewelry. Jewelry can be a great way to add some small details to any outfit, but it's possible to have too much of a good thing. Like excessive branding, having too much jewelry might make it seem like you're trying to show off. No one likes to be subjected to someone trumpeting their success and wearing too much jewelry can definitely give off that feeling. Just to be clear, if you typically wear a lot of jewelry, that's perfectly fine, but you should never rely on jewelry to artificially boost your confidence. Most of the time, it'll give your date the wrong impression if you pile on jewelry just to look flashy. We have a guide on how to properly wear men's jewelry here. But suffice it to say, unless that iced out Rolex or Miami gold Cuban chain is typically part of your attire, it's not time to break it out on a date. Number nine, unusually bold items. So let's take our advice when it comes to jewelry and expand it to other parts of your outfit. Keep in mind that a date is not the place to test out a new style. If a three-piece suit is not what you typically wear, a date is not the place to try it out unless the event calls for it. Date should be a place of a genuine exchange where both parties are comfortable. And if you don't typically wear a suit, you're not gonna be comfortable. So please dress up, but in a way that's comfortable for you. But of course, follow the established dress codes. This suggestion also applies to articles of clothing that are supposed to set the mood. So to keep it short, if a leather jacket or leather pants aren't typically part of your style, don't wear them here. And leather pants could make you feel quite uncomfortable. If you're not accustomed to wearing one, a burgundy velvet smoking jacket will not make you more sexy. And having your date picture Hugh Hefner is not a great idea either. And if red just isn't your color, a red jewel tone shirt is not a good idea. Basically, at the end of the day, if you're not comfortable in a garment, it's going to show on the date. And that will adversely affect the mood. So stick to items that you're accustomed to, and if you want to get something new, pick something that you already know and like, like a new pair of socks or a new pocket square. And always remember that a new pair of Fort Belvedere socks will be better and more versatile than any pair of leather pants. Lastly, number 10, fussy clothing. So after all this time spent about picking the right outfit for your date, just remember that you're taking your date out, not your suit. So whatever you choose to wear, make sure that it's not fussy. And by this, we mean make sure that that garment doesn't require a lot of extra attention. For example, every moment you spend running into the bathroom to make sure that your ivory dinner jacket doesn't have a stain on it is a moment you could be spent enjoying your dinner. And if you're constantly having to fiddle with your tie to make sure that the length is right, that's time wasted that you could have spent dancing. If your outfit's too fragile or too finicky that it requires constant attention, don't wear it. You shouldn't be going over your clothes with a magnifying glass. You should be paying attention to your date. No matter what you're wearing or how good it looks, if you spend all the time focusing on the outfit, the date was a failure. So focus on having fun on your date and less on the sleeve pitch of your sports jacket. We hope that you've seen a consistent theme throughout our list. When dressing for a date, opt for clothes that fit your style, fit the occasion, and show that you put forth special effort. And stay away from clothes that take away from the evening and give false impressions. 
Ultimately, the clothing that we choose shows how we respect others and respect is everything when it comes to a date. While I can't make dating any easier for you, we hope that this video is a guide on how to make dressing for the date much easier. In today's outfit, I'm wearing something that would be great for a casual and laid back date with my wife. All the items that I've chosen are simple. I don't have to worry about them if they get stained or dirty and can get beat up a little bit. I'm wearing an army green jungle jacket. This is great for maybe a movie date. You can put in your tickets and even smuggle in candy. For my shirt, I'm wearing a made to measure shirt from Beckett and Rob. This is a denim shirt. Denim's a really great bridge for its casual nature, but with a more structured collar, it dresses it up. For my pants, I'm wearing a simple pair of tan chinos from LL Bean. I don't care if these get dirty and they wash easily. To keep the outfit a little bit more dressed down with a casual jacket, I'm wearing a pair of white sneakers. These are from Oliver Cabell. My socks are our brown and cream striped socks from Fort Belvedere. If you're interested in these socks or any other socks, check out the Fort Belvedere shop here.